the van. Can I help? Oh, hi there. I, I got your card and I wanted to get some needles from you. Yes, we can do that. Where would you like to meet? Um, could you meet me at, um, just in a parking lot at... Okay, is there a number we can call when we get there or do you want to just make an arrangement? No, my cell phone's almost dead, so could we just take a time and we could meet? So let's say in about 15 minutes. Okay, I'll meet you in the parking lot in 15 minutes. Okay, we're a white van, we don't have any, um, there's no name or any identifier on it. And there'll be uh, a woman driving and a man beside me as the, the other person in the van, okay? And okay, I'm, so this is Mikey down when I see you? I'm Suzanne. I'm Linda Blake Evans and I'm the program manager with Public Health Services of the Van Needle Exchange and Street Health Program. Uh, like any other large city, of, uh, we're over at least 500,000 population, we have people with addictions. Addictions are a hidden problem in our city and affects many families. Our video hopes to educate the public about harm reduction, our program, and, and needle exchange and that it can be effective method in reducing the risk of infections in our community, helping people get the help that they require and uh, while keeping our community safe from disposed needles and, uh, and reducing health care costs from people who may acquire infections from, from sharing needles. In this video you will see actual clients of ours who have agreed to be part of our video who will share their experiences and opinions of of the needle exchange program, uh, including one client who now is a volunteer with our program and in the community to give back uh, to the community after going through his own drug rehab. The Van Needle Exchange program started in 1992 in Hamilton after recommendation from a local task force interested in reducing the risk of HIV in our community. Uh, the van is uh, funded through public health services and staffed by public health nurses as well as a combination of outreach workers and volunteers. Our outreach workers are from a variety of agencies in the city such as the AIDS Network, uh, Aboriginal Health Care Centre and Elizabeth Fry Society. Our volunteers are trained and recruited by our local AIDS organization and that's a very effective partnership. So one of the reasons we decided to make this video is because there are some negative perceptions about people who use needles, harm reduction, and our role in helping people who inject drugs. Harm reduction focuses on the most immediate and achievable changes that can reduce the threat to the health and well-being of individuals. We have respect for human dignity, we're totally non-judgmental, and our services are confidential. It's great, it's confidential, it's quiet, it's discreet, there's no stickers or anything on the van. And it's, I think it's the safest thing going, instead of people using dirty needles and getting infected and diseased, and it's the best thing. The goals of the Van Needle Exchange Program are threefold. Uh, the first one is that we reduce the risk of infection uh, from bloodborne diseases such as hepatitis and HIV through decreasing the, the use of uh, shared needles. Uh, we also help keep used needles off the street as much as possible, even going to pick up uh, needles identified in the community that are, are left behind by, by people. Uh, it, our van gives out sharps containers and also you know, certainly encourages people to bring back their used needles to our sites. Uh, thirdly, we often are the, again the first step for clients to connect with a health care worker and uh, we help link people to resources and services they need for immediate and uh, future health care. There, there's also strong evidence locally that money is well spent on a needle exchange program. In fact, a study done in Hamilton demonstrated that every dollar spent uh, on needle exchange program resulted in a four dollar cost savings in healthcare costs and that's due to preventing HIV and hepatitis. 
um, which, uh, as we know, can lead to uh, increased health care costs from people needing to use emergency rooms and hospital, hospital beds. We have documented that uh, we've made over 10,000 client contacts uh, per year uh, doing needle exchange and that's largely due to the cooperation that we have from some partner agencies who also distribute harm reduction supplies for us. And uh, that's community agencies such as Wesley Urban Ministries, Aboriginal Health Centre, uh, Hamilton Urban Core Community Health Centre, uh, Marchese Healthcare, Elizabeth Fry Society and Hamilton AIDS Network and this is above and beyond what our van and street health centre can distribute. So thank you again to our community partners who help make our program a success. A regular night is um, at 8 o'clock I either meet the volunteer here or I go and I pick them up and uh, we would pick up the messages on the phone um, that people had left during the day and uh, the volunteer would call them and arrange to meet them wherever that person wanted us to meet them. So either in front of their house, around the corner, at a convenience store, just whatever is best for them. So often people will need syringes, um, but now we have the whole works and so um, uh, if people need ties or water or um, cookers, ascorbic acid, filters, just whatever they need. Um, and then often uh, people Depending on what's going on, they might want to talk for a bit. Uh, if they're going through a crisis, they might just need some counseling. Um, so we would go and do that the whole night uh, until 12 o'clock. And uh, as long as people are calling, we will uh, keep on uh, answering their calls and meeting them. There is a very great risk um, if people share needles um, in spreading uh, HIV, hepatitis C, or B, um, because all of those are blood-borne infections, um, which means that they are transmitted through blood. Um, so what they were finding is that um, if you share, there is, um, when a needle is taken out of the arm, uh, there would be blood in the needle, on the needle, in the barrel of the needle, and so if the next person uses that, then they um, are shooting that blood directly into their bloodstream, which is uh, a great risk of, of transmitting um, those diseases. Without clean needles, I would probably have HIV by now. If there were not a needle exchange program, I believe people would share needles and our rates of HIV and hepatitis B and C would go up. Um, I was actually too ashamed to go to the pharmacy to buy new needles, so I ended up using, reusing any needles I had. I would um, use used needles. Uh, from people that were around, um, try to convince other people to go to the drugstore for me. Um, I think I used for oh six months or a year before I actually ever went to a pharmacy myself. Without clean needles, um, we ended up reusing them uh, to the point where they'd become dull. Uh, very hard to hit with a dull needle. We end up sharpening them on matchbooks. Um, the Strikers uh, is a very good um, sharpening tool. People would be getting sick. They'd be dying. They'd be using dirty needles all over the place. Sure they would. They'd be sharing needles and that's not a cool thing. I use a needle once and throw it out. It's, I have no scars or nothing on my arms to prove it. No holes, no, no traces, no tracks because you guys supply enough that you don't have to use a needle twice to get sick, cotton fever, or anything like that. You use it once, throw it away. You don't have to go out on the street looking for syringes, cleaning supplies, disposal containers. They're all provided. Well, we were tending to rewash and reuse same needle after over and over again, and not uh, being hygiene nearly as hygienic about it and as safe. I'd have to try and clean old ones. It gets scary with my situation. I think if the van program didn't exist, there would be a lot of people using dirty needles. Um, people wouldn't be able to access resources and counseling, and there'd be a lot more needles disposed of in very unsafe ways. A lot of people would keep a needle and use it over and over, which means that it would be getting quite dull, um, not as sharp, um, and have huge risk for contamination and infection 
and large groups of people would be just passing one needle around between them. I would watch people um, share needles all the time. My brother was a big IV user. He, he was a speed freak, so he used to share needles. Uh, if they didn't have any clean water or anything, they'd use dirty water on the ground and no sharps containers, so they, they wouldn't break the sharp part of the needle. They just throw their needle on the laneway or on the street in parks, wherever they had to. Yeah, they were sharing them and stuff, so I think that's really stupid. But then again, I've got the advantage of always having this here, so. We help keep used needles off the street and out of public areas by providing a way for injection drug users to dispose of their needles safely, as well as picking up needles found in the community. Another part of harm reduction is about um, reducing the harm to the community as well. And so um, what we do is we go out into the community and uh, okay. to places where people use um, and pick up any needles that are left behind uh, there. So I go, try to go to a different part well. of the community about once a week um, and uh, make sure that it's all picked up and clean and safe. Whenever we hear of needles being um, found in parks or near schools or in playgrounds or on trails like this, um, we'll come by and uh, search for them and find them and, and pick them up uh, with a proper uh, utensil and then we'll uh, dispose of them. Um, we don't get too many calls like that, but uh, when we do, we uh, always make sure that we come out. And I usually, uh, I'm on the van from 8 to midnight, so if it's not too busy doing needle exchange, I'll come and look for the needles and uh, pick them up and dispose of them in a proper sharps container. Our clients are very diverse. Um, we are all over the city, um, from East End Stony Creek to West End Ancaster to up on the mountain to North End. Um, it's really no limit where we will go in the city. We develop relationships with injection drug users and help them connect to the services they need. Who cares? The people here are, uh, are discreet. They, they're here to help. They were there and they were offering me things that I needed that I wasn't willing to to reach out and ask for myself because addicts have a hard time trusting people and, and when they're used to certain people and the thing about the van is is they have different shifts with different people but you get to know all the people that go on the van. It has a real sense of trust amongst its clients and the people that it serves. Um, people feel safe talking to anyone on the van and I've heard some incredible stories from people I don't even know uh, just because they feel so safe in approaching and sharing what's going on in their lives. It's also referred people to um, the different detox and addictions facilities, to the STARS program, to street health for HIV testing or for other types of um, health related matters, to the Wesley, to the soup van. I mean really any program that people who are living a marginalized existence need, the van has been able to help them access it. Like if we refer somebody to McMaster, we'll make sure to give, um, give them a bus ticket. They also introduced me to um, the alcohol, drug and gambling uh, drug counselor they have here at the Street Health Center. Um, and I hooked up with her and talked to her continually probably for about four years. I do owe society and this is my way of giving back. I think that one of the things I love about being a worker on the van is that you get to be really responsive um, to what people need and what's going on in that uh, situation. Because they see us all the time, they know what we need. The program definitely works. Um, without the van giving out new needles, um, I would definitely have HIV today.